Have you ever wanted to quit? I've quit. Mm. I've quit. I've disappeared. I've quit. I've stopped doing everything before. I quit. I'm not doing this anymore. In those moments, I've been able to motivate myself to get back up because it's like the passion is what drives you. Hello. Hi. How Thank are you. you? I'm good. Thank you for having me today. Thank you for being here. Of course. You are all the things. You are a mother, a boss lady, Thank entrepreneur, you. an actress. And you just, not just, but you created a line for you and your daughter called Glitter and Lace. Yes. How did you believe or know that that was something that you needed to dive into, knowing that you had your hands in all these other things? Well, I feel like me becoming a mother became my biggest role in life. You know, I feel like God blessed me with that role. And I have the um, opportunity, mm. the, the, the honor of raising a little human. And um, I pay attention to everything about her. And she is artistically blessed. And she's been into fashion since she's been like, I don't know, born. At two years old, I remember dressing her, getting her ready for preschool, and she said, no, I don't want to wear that. It's not chic. <laughs> two. <laughs> so I'm she like, knew right away off the bat. I'm like, how do you even have yeah. chic in your vocabulary? So, sure. you know, I knew there was something special there, and she would go to school, and she would design dresses and bring things home to me and say, Mommy, look what I made. And I feel like it's my job to nurture that, mm -hmm. you know, not mm -hmm. push it too, too much, but, like, really nurture that. And... I have so many resources available to me. I was like, how beautiful would it be if I could create a line with my daughter now? She was four at the time when we mm -hmm. started the line. Mm -hmm. And um, we do this together. Mm -hmm. Me as a role to empower other mothers mm -hmm. and empowering my daughter to show her the process of creating, you know, in, in, in doses. Because yeah. we're, not, we're not pushing her to be a, a, a baby billionaire. Maybe. Right. But, you never know. <laughs> you never know. But we, we take it in doses, and um, it's something that we can do together. Mm -hmm. It's something that nurtures her creativity. And I hope that one day when she's 18, she, you know, takes the brand and turns it into a contemporary brand, and she can always go, you know what, I started that brand with my mom when I was younger. Yeah. And I did it because she's, she's looking at everything I'm doing. Mm -hmm. She knows about pastry and what me and Angela built, and she has questions about fashion and how it works. And I feel like, since that, that instinct is already there, why not nurture it? Yeah. Why not? She gets so much joy out of creating and seeing something come to fruition. Yeah. She talks about it all the time. She's like, Mommy, can me and my friend Naya, can we, can we design the line for next season? I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. of course. It makes me excited. So, you know, I feel like my biggest role in life is being a mother and anything and everything to make her happy or to, to shape and build a generation next, you know? Yeah. And I'm a mom as well, a pretty new mom. I have a 50-month-old. And I know with being an entrepreneur and working, a lot of times the mom guilt can trickle in. You know, just the guilt of, can I hop on the Zoom or can I not hop on the Zoom or going to this meeting or showing up on set? You have that propensity to feel like you're doing something wrong, but in all actuality, it's really empowering us. Yeah. How have you dealt with mom guilt when it comes about, you know, during your daily life? It comes up all the time. All the time. <laughs> and especially because, you know, I have a part of me that still finds it very necessary to prioritize me. You know, a lot of People become mothers, they become parents, and they feel like it's some sort of deadline, that everything they needed to accomplish needed to be accomplished before they had their kids. And that's just not true. Like, I feel like I was inspired in a whole new way by becoming a mother. It's a whole new chapter, you know, evolution of myself. And I could put that into my work. So it wasn't a deadline, wasn't, you know, the end of, of you know, my dreams and goals. It was just a new chapter into that. I get to see life from a different perspective being a mother than I did, you know, before then. So I get to incorporate all that into my passions. How do you find that order in your life 
where things that you're looking for that flow or is it just an everyday thing that is something new? It's an everyday balancing act. Mm -hmm. And you have to find what works for you. Everyone has to find the balancing act that works for them. And yeah, you were talking about the mom guilt because that does seep in when I'm going after my goals, my dreams. I'm like, oh, should I be home? Like, I'm not going to be able to make dinner. I have to order in. You got to give yourself some grace, man. We can't do it all. But what we have to do is make ourselves happy so that we can be whole at home and be able to give back to our kids the way they need to be nurtured and into our families and things. So you do need to take that time for yourself. It just won't always feel great, but you got to fight it. I think that's just our instincts as women, mm -hmm. you know, needing to feel like we always need to be there. I even had a really hard time hiring help at first because I was like, I don't want to feel like, and I don't want other people to judge. That's another thing. Like, oh, she's a nanny. Like, you know, like what's that connotation that comes with that? But you cannot worry about what other people are thinking. And that's the main thing. And just go with what feels good. As long as everyone in your house is happy, you're happy. That's important. So many times moms put themselves on the back burners. You have to be happy in order to have a full home. So go after those goals, go after those dreams. So you don't, you know, get older and go, wow, yeah. I should have. That's good. We spoke earlier about just the struggles with, you know, becoming a mom and the struggles just in life in general, what do you believe you personally gained from your motherhood that you didn't even know that you needed to gain? Patience and grace, mm -hmm. giving myself grace. Um, not needing to feel perfect for a long time before having Ava, I always felt like everything needed to be perfect. I needed to present it in a certain way. And if I didn't present it in a certain way, I wouldn't show up at all. That is not living. And after I had my child, I realized it's okay to fall and make mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know, like you have to be gentle with yourself. Like you're gentle raising a child because they don't know. You have to sometimes give yourself that same grace that you even give your child. Like feed your inner, your inner child because we, we need that, that, that love sometimes from mm -hmm. ourselves. So I gained a whole different perspective on yeah. life, a whole different perspective on how to treat myself, how to truly love myself when there's a little human watching you all the time and sometimes you're plastering on a smile that's not really there, you gotta go deep in to figure out how to really get it to be present. And how do you get it present? <sighs> oh, a number of things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a daily thing, but it's meditations. It's giving myself me time whenever I need it. If, you know, things are going a little haywire and off track, sometimes you need to stop and pause and sit in stillness you know, to figure out how to move forward. Because it's not always about the moving. Sometimes we get so caught up in the, the moving and we got to do this, we got to accomplish this. Sometimes you need to be still and go with the flow. You have to. My dad used to tell me this when I was younger, but I was like, no, I got things to do. I, I want to be a big actress. I want to do this. But if you don't go with the flow, you're, you're, you're going to be fighting against it, you know? Mm -hmm. So you just got to give yourself grace Find the self-care moments that can work for you to, to tap into yourself. As we know, your father is Rev Run from the legendary um, group Run DMC. You grew up as his oldest daughter. And um, as we were speaking, my father is, was a Major League Baseball player and Major League coach. And so with that, my identity and really knowing who I was was very intertwined with who he was which is not necessarily a bad thing, but you can get lost in it. Yeah. I was always known as Jerry Manuel's daughter, not Natalie Manuel. And so I'm sure you probably had the same parallel situation yeah. of being known as Rev Run's daughter, not just Vanessa Simmons. What was that season like for you? Or what was that journey like to finding your true identity outside of that? I'd say that I'm still on that journey. You know, um, people are always like, oh, you know, you know, you have to get from underneath your father's spotlight or your family's, your family's shadow. And I'm like, no, why? It's not that I want to be in their shadow, but I'm incredibly proud of where I come from. So I'm not extracting myself from it. I'm proud of my roots. I'm proud of where I come from. My thing is, I just always wanted to be able to add to that legacy. And it's incredibly hard when there's such huge shoes to fill. Mm -hmm. You know, so you just, again, you got to not care about other people's judgment 
and go forth with something that you feel passionate about to add to society, like add to the world. Like that's what I'm always, I feel like my daily fight is like, what is my purpose? Why am I here? You know, I came from this amazing family, but how can I add to that legacy? Do you know why you're here and do you know your purpose? It's always developing. It's always evolving. I know that I feel like I'm here to inspire and empower. Um, I do. I feel like I've been put in like a privileged position and I don't deny that at all in life. So I feel like sometimes part of my purpose is to inspire and empower other people to live into their true purpose by just totally being who I am and living into everything I'm passionate about and trying to not think about what other people say because we all fall short of that sometimes. Mm -hmm. But the constant like pushing that away because it can get hard. Like we had Run's house pretty early on and we were like kind of put into the spotlight at an early age and like it's fun. There's tons of pros, but then there's also I love a that lot. show, by the Thank way. You. I loved it. I would t definitely binge it. For it also sure. like just put us out there and then it's big and then it, you know a lot of people have a lot of opinions that they throw on us and it's important not to let those opinions stick to us. How do you do that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> because I mean I, I know it for me it's it's still a wrestle. It's a wrestle. I even retracted myself from everything for a while mm -hmm. because I feel like oh I'm not meeting my dad at that level, you know, and people have so much to say and they put all their opinions on me and then I'm like, well then I'm just not going to do it at all, but I am being a disservice to myself and to people that I could possibly impact or that people that can relate to me. So um, it's a constant everyday thing, but I just feel like as long as I am putting my best foot forward every single day and, um, you know, working on stuff I'm passionate about, stuff that I feel like could be positive to the community, then, you know, I'm living in my purpose and I'll continue to do it every day and it'll probably change. Take me to a moment where you believed and felt like you just weren't going to make it. You weren't going to make it. And for some way, somehow, you got out of that cloud. If it was a mental breakdown that you had, if it was motherhood stuff, if it was work. Well, we talked about earlier how I, like, you know, gave up, stopped doing stuff, stopped seeing friends. I became a recluse uh, a few years after Run's House and Daddy's Girls. Um, suffered majorly from social anxiety. I still do. It's an everyday struggle. And it surprised me because I was never that girl. I was always fearless. Could go up and talk to whoever about whatever, like party, what, whatever. I could do whatever. And it, in my adulthood, I found that I, I was struggling with social anxiety. And those are times where you feel like you can't overcome that. Like, I cannot go to this event. Like, what am I going to say? What are they going to think? Those are the times where I had to really, really fall back in love with myself and, and train myself to fall back in love with myself and, and take affirmation serious, take my prayer life seriously, take, you know, those inner, inner moments more seriously to, to build myself back up. But I, I still struggle with, you know, social anxiety. How do you train your mind? meditation, affirmations. Like in the morning I take my daughter to school, I make her say, I am happy, I am happy, I am happy, like 10 times. And she's like, mommy, after I finish it, like just, I can't explain it, a smile comes on my face. That's how I know stuff like that works. And that's stuff I do to myself. I have to wake up every morning and go, I am enough. I am enough, I am enough, I am enough, I am enough. Mm. So then you feel like enough. That's how you, you trick your mind. You say it, really believe it, and then just action, go forward. You said in an interview during the pandemic that you had to lean in and do some internal work. What did that internal work look like and what was the catalyst? The catalyst was that we were stuck at home and we were stuck with our thoughts and whoever lived within the walls we live in. And you had a lot of time to think and I had a lot of time to think about what I was contributing to the world, what I was contributing to myself. Because like I said, we're always on the go, always on the move, trying to make something happen. But sometimes we forget to love on ourselves, truly. So I went on the process of refalling in love with myself, not who I am in the public, not I'm Reverend Run's daughter, not, you know, I'm Simmons. Not, no, my soul. Who am I? Um, and I'm still on that journey every single day. But like, I just 
leaned into me, like, you know, what truly makes me happy? While I can still be all the great things for everyone else around me, how could I be the best me to me so that I could give, you know, my best self to the work I do and to my family, et cetera? And what was that? What do you believe makes you happy? And who are you? Who am I? I am a very proud mother, of course, and I am a woman who wants to be great. You know, I want to be the best. And when I say the best, I don't mean it in a competitive way mm -hmm. because I'm inspired by all the great people that I get to meet in my industry and stuff. I mean competitive with myself. How could I be the best me in my world? I like to hold myself to great integrity, you know, do what I say I'm going to do even when nobody's watching. Like, those are the things that count to like building character. Like, not how you're presented to the world, but how you really operate mm -hmm. in a day-to-day -day life. And it just takes a lot of internal work. Journaling, it's helpful. Sometimes you, you, you journal things when you're just like doing the, what's it called, free thought writing. Yes, yeah. You just mm -hmm. do a dump. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised what comes yeah. out. And then with that release can come growth. Mm -hmm. And so I, I love stuff like that. I love journaling things that sound a little taboo, but like things like that work, affirmations, mm -hmm. um, just truly loving on yourself in every single way, not denying yourself anything, anything you can imagine you can go after. It might take some time, might take little steps. Like I said, I want to be great. I want to be the best. It's, I know that that's not an overnight process. So giving myself the grace to, to mm -hmm. get to there. I don't have to be what the next person, how they did it, or what age they were when they achieved it. You know, be committed to your story. Mm -hmm. Be inspired by the people around us. You know, like, I love cheering other people on. I get inspired by other people. Like, I see other women doing great things that I've come up with in the industry, and I'm like, I mean it when I comment on their Instagram. Like, oh, that's fire. I'm proud of you because they're inspiring me. Like, make me feel like I can do it too. And sometimes I feel like people are too afraid to talk about that because they want to feel like, no, I'm a best. This person could never, they could never. No, like, let's be inspired by one another and we would build such a stronger, better community. What do you think the root of that is, of just being, comparing ourselves to other, other, other women, not wanting to affirm other women because of maybe the things that we're wrestling with inside. I mean, we've all dealt with that. I've dealt with that, you know, before, but it was like, wait a minute, hold up. This isn't really who I am. This is not what I want to be. And I had to get to the root. And some of it for me was straight up insecurity. It is. For you, what do you feel? Or for others, what do you believe that that root is? I think social media came in and turned our came world in hot. upside down. <laughs> social media came in Hot. And I don't know if we were ready for it. I don't know. And it, it just moved so fast. And it left us all in a position of looking at what other people are doing when really we should be looking, celebrating, getting inspired, adding more into our life. Like it should be a continuous like circle of life type situation. But it got out of control. It, it, egos get involved. I, I don't know. Insecurities definitely take place. And we all fall, fall, fall to insecurities at times. So um, that's where that inner work comes in. The, you know, the journaling, the affirmations, the meditations, the prayer, the prayer, the prayer, the prayer, the prayer, nonstop. You know, that's where all of that comes in so that you can fight those feelings because they will come up. Yeah. You can literally ask God, like, please, I don't want to feel jealous. I want to be happy for people. I was just about to ask, when they come up, what is your dialogue to self or what, what, what do you do in those moments? Affirm myself but without taking away from the person that's doing great. And I'm like, wow, I wish I had that opportunity or whatever. But no, like, I'm happy for you now. I'm going to get up. I'm going to get up tomorrow morning, five o'clock in the morning, work out and, you know, work hard to get to my next goal. You know, yeah. let them serve as the inspiration. But it can be hard. You know, it's always easier said than done. But mm -hmm. it's all about the inner work you do on yourself. Yeah. And with that, the pandemic, I believe a lot of us had to transition out of some things in order to transition into some yeah. things. We had to transition out of the old and to transition into the new. What do you believe you transitioned out of and what are you transitioning into? I transitioned out of just being busy to be busy. Because when that moment in 2020, when we had a moment to just be still, it's like, okay, wow, what was I doing out there? Being stressed out and, you know, like, we can work smarter, not harder. 
And so we're balancing that work play life too. Like, you know, like it's just as important to secure the bag as it is to, you know, go on a girl's weekend, have your friends, you know, making time, adequate time for each facet in your life to live a full life. It's not just about making money and working. That is called burnout. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, that's good. And um, speaking of burnout, it's the, the culture does a great job of telling us we have to do this, we have to do that in order to keep up yeah. with the Joneses, in order to just keep up with whatever the world is saying that we need, do you believe that you've made it because the world knows your name, because of maybe what's in your, your account, what cars you drive? Do you believe you've arrived? I don't know. Hmm. I don't, you know what? It's scary because I don't, you know, and I feel like it comes down to living in those like present moment to moment so you can appreciate it. Because like I said, like before 2020, I was living just constantly busy, constantly doing things. I got to make it, I got to make it. But you ask me that question and I say, no, I, you know, there's so much more I have to do before I feel like I arrived. But I think you have to make it the moment that you arrive so that you can fully live into yourself. Otherwise, you're just always going to be working towards it and you're going to have the same sick cycle. What do they say? Insanity is doing the same thing over and over expecting the same, I mean, expecting different results. You, maybe you just have to say, I arrived. Maybe that's something I have to do. I've arrived. You know, like, I've, I've done a lot of great things in life that I'm really proud of. And sometimes I'm always looking to the next that I forget to appreciate those moments. What is arriving, you know? What is arriving? What it's is up to you. It's up to the individual. What is it? What is success? What is it? What is we made it? What is, you know... To, to me, it's just, it's funny because you pray and ask for these things and then you get it and you're there. And it's like, wait, is the, is the happiness, is the joy there? Is the peace there? Are those things, that's to me arriving. That's success. That's success. Happy. People will be surprised how many people are walking around not happy, just existing. Mm -hmm. Happiness. Mm -hmm. Being able to just wake up and be grateful, happy, that's, that's absolutely success. Yeah. That's the feeling I want to work on having every day. Yeah, yeah. totally. What's next? I am acting, um, preparing for a production on another film. So I'm really excited about that. That is something I have been passionate about my whole life and have worked towards. So I'm blessed that I get hired and get to have opportunities um, within the industry I work towards. And um, building out the business. Me and Ava are rebuilding Glitter and Lace, and she's eight now. And the last time she designed a line, she was five. So she's very excited I to— I can't she's already designed at five. Yeah, she has like a little tiny form at all at home, and she, she designs for her doll. She'll make little dresses and fairy wings and corsets. And she's like, Mommy, can you fix the bodice? I'm like, who is teaching you this <laughs> lingo? Like, she is, seri she is serious about it, but— I love it. And um, she's the best partner I could mm -hmm. ask for to be able to build with my daughter and show her the ropes and then hopefully one day watch her like run a company that would be success. Mm -hmm. That would be happiness. Congratulations on booking your role. Thank you. What is your process like as you're preparing for that role? Um, I like to do a lot of like journal work for my characters now. It's a new process I've taken on and just like really go in deep dive and, and create meaningful characters. I think that we're given such a gift as actors to be able to tell a story that I always want to make it authentic. And so I do have some new tricks up my sleeves with my work, and um, I'm looking forward to everyone seeing some of my new projects. Okay, I want to stay here a little bit, and then yeah. we can wrap it up. With acting, as we know, there's a lot of no's that you get Woo! before you get that one yes. How do you stay optimistic knowing that you're going to get that no after no, a.k.a. that rejection, but yet you keep going after it? What would you, you know, tell an actor or actress coming up that is going after those roles, is going after those roles, and they're just getting no after no and just are weary? Yeah. They're weary in the process, and their belief has been interrupted with disbelief. It's been interrupted with uncertainty. What could you say to them and how do you keep going? I've been there. You get so many no's, it feels out 
outrageous. Like, it's like you can't even endure another no. Um, but it's in those moments when you keep getting back up. Each of those no's should strengthen your talent. It sounds crazy, but, you know, it could take away from your confidence, but you can't let it because there's so many politics that go into picking, you know, actors and actresses for roles. It won't be because you're terrible. It just means that your, your, your opportunity is just around the corner. You got to keep getting up and going. Keep chipping off at the block. What does the book say? The Alchemist, we got to put in out 10,000 hours. That's real. And that's a lot. You hit that 10,000 hours, <laughs> though, you'll see some changes. It's like magic. Sure. But you got to put in that work. Mm -hmm. You know, to you get that opportunity and to stay focused, to stay um, on your game, just keep studying, mm -hmm. keep inspiring, keep um, motivating yourself and know that your opportunity is around the corner, but that everyone goes to it. It's like a right to passage into acting. Have you ever wanted to quit? I've quit. Mm. I've quit. I've disappeared. I've quit. I've stopped doing everything before. But, you know, in those moments, I've been able to motivate myself to get back up because it's like the passion is what drives you, the passion. Like, mm -hmm. you know, but I quit. I'm like, I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah. I'm not going to another audition and getting told no. Well, I think you are I telling like, me no. no. I was like, wait, audition. Yes. <laughs> like, I know. I, All the, I know what I put into this. I know I prepared. Yeah. So, That's so real. It's That's, just, I love that you quit and you and you and you picked back up. Quit. Yeah. There are times people can't find couldn't yeah. find me. That's good, but that's real. Yeah. So here at Butta, we'd like to discuss, um, of course, all of the beauty products, all the, for the ex exterior, the external. And what do you do internally to work on your beauty internally? Internally, um, like I said, that self-work, you know, um, making sure that I'm feeding myself right, mm -hmm. treating myself right, um, because all of those things count from the inside out. Um, just at, like strive every day to be a better mother, better sister, better friend, a better, a better me. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. I've been broke. I know what it's like to not eat. I know what it's like to not have hot water. I know what it's like to not have lights and having to, to light a bunch of candles so that I can pick up my clothes for school the next day. If I never had that struggle when I was younger, when I finally started to walk in the blessings that God was giving, giving me, I never want to go back. Come on.